good morning and welcome to the Court Street United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy Peters. Today I'm coming to you from the sanctuary in downtown Flint. As we get started this morning, I want to say welcome to those people who are joining us in worship through Facebook. Welcome to those who are joining us on YouTube. Welcome to those who are joining us through Zoom. Welcome to those who have come to us through our church website. Welcome to worship. We are glad you are here. God loves you. And there is nothing you, there is nothing anybody can do about it. If you're worshiping with us this morning on Facebook and YouTube, we encourage you to take a moment to greet one another in the comments section. And if you're joining us through Facebook, we would love for you to share this time of worship with your Facebook friends. Somewhere out there, somebody this morning is looking for a sign that God is real. Somebody is looking for a sign that God's love is real and that we are not alone. Your invitation to worship might be just the sign that someone has been watching for. This morning in worship, we're going to continue our sermon series for the season of Lent with another special guest preacher. We're going to remember a powerful moment of worship that happened two years ago this week. We're going to pray with Ryan Pratt. We have a special guest for children's time today. But before we do any of that, we're going to begin our worship with a song. If you've got a United Methodist hymnal at home and you'd like to follow along, you can find the hymns we will be singing today at numbers 572 and 571. That's 572 and 571. All right, church. Take a deep breath and let's approach God with a song. This year during the season of Lent, we are sharing in a sermon series with other United Methodist congregations from all around the city of Flint. Last Sunday in worship, our special guest preacher was Pastor Greg Timmons of the Calvary United Methodist Church. This morning, our special guest preacher will be Pastor J.J. Manshrek of the Flushing United Methodist Church. Now, this collaborative sermon series is just a continuation of a long-standing Court Street tradition of reaching out during the season of Lent and connecting in worship with other congregations and even with churches of other denominations. 
For us, Lent is a time to set aside the things that have divided us and remember that we are one body in Christ. It's a time to remember that we are not alone in our faith. We share a faith, we share a hope, we share a love with followers of Jesus all around the city of Flint and all around the world. One of the things that connects us with believers around the world and through the ages is this treasure of the church, this thing we call the Apostles' Creed. Now, this morning as we say the words of the Apostles' Creed together, I hope that you will feel connected to believers all around the city of Flint all around the world, and I hope that somewhere in these words you will find a connection to God. Let's say these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, now I want to say good morning to the kids who are joining us in worship today. Good morning, kids. I am glad you are here. I am so glad you are taking time to worship with your church family this morning. I love you. Your church family loves you, and God loves you. Now it's time to come on down close to the screen. We're going to say hi to Pastor Christy, and then she is going to introduce us to this morning's special guest for our children's time. Welcome to children's time. A time for kids and anyone who is young of heart. Hi friends, it's Pastor Christy. And our book today is Are Your Stars Like My Stars? by Leslie Helikoski. It's a sterling children's book published in 2020. We would love to hear your favorite stories. Take a video of someone reading in your family, or maybe someone can take a video of you. And you can email it to me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. Our story today is shared by our friend, Mr. David Lindsay. Mr. David likes to sing. He's our choir conductor at Court Street, and he's a music teacher in Flint. We are so thankful to have Mr. David as our friend. Are you ready to hear the book together? Here we go. Are Your Stars Like My Stars? Illustrated by Heidi Woodward Sheffield. Story by Leslie Helikoski. We look at the world every day, you and me. Do we see the same things? Do you see what I see? When you squint at the sky, do you see the same hue, deep, wide, and open? Is your blue like my blue? When the sun gazes down, shining yellow and bold, is it warm, full of sparkle? Is your gold like my gold? When you dig in the dirt, Planting seeds in the ground, is it earthy and rich? Is your brown like my brown? Do you splash in a puddle when the world is washed clean? Are the leaves fresh and bright? Is your green like my green? When you stroll in an orchard, do sweet smells fill your head? Is the fruit bold and flashy? Is your red like my red? Does your shadow grow long as the sun starts to sink? Are the clouds soft and rosy? Is your pink like my pink? When your eyes are shut tight, do you peek just a crack? Is the night smooth and sleepy? 
Is your black like my black? When you stare at the stars, do you see the same light? Does it glow in the darkness? Is your white like my white? We look at each other every day, you and me. Do we see the same things? Do I see what you see? Wow. Thanks, friend, for sharing your book with us. I really love this book. It's a wonderful reminder that we are so very different. The places we live, the color of our skin, the food we eat, even sometimes our families are so very different. But isn't it great that we share the same sky, the same stars, the moon and the sun, we share the same love, and we're all created by God, each of us, to be unique and different and special. Well, it's time for us to ask some questions. You know, questions that make us wonder. Hmm. I wonder, how are our lives different than the kids we saw in the book? I wonder how our lives are the same. And I wonder who can we listen to this week and learn their stories? Maybe it's a friend, maybe a grandparent or someone older than us can tell us about how life was like when they were a kid. We can listen to their stories and we can hear how they're so much like us and how they're very different. Hmm. I can't wait to hear about who you listen to this week. Let's pray together. Can you say this prayer with me? Thank you, Jesus, for showing us how we are the same and wonderfully different as humans. Help us to listen and learn more about each other. May I always remember, I am important in this church. I am important in my family. And I am very, very loved. Amen. Well, my friends, I hope you have a fabulous week as you discover new things about people that you know. And maybe you'll even meet some new friends along the way. Remember, you are very, very loved. Well, now we've reached that time in our worship when we approach God in a moment of prayer. As we approach God in prayer this morning, I am feeling hopeful. Over the last couple of weeks, more than 50 people, many of them court streeters, have been engaged in a conversation about racism and the way that it shapes our lives and the way that it shapes the world around us. And this hasn't been an easy journey. We've learned a lot of difficult things so far. We've had a lot of difficult conversations. And after this last week's conversation, one participant reached out to me and said, Pastor, at this point in our journey, after learning all of the things we've learned in the last two weeks, the question that I have is, is there any hope for us? And I said, of course, there is hope for us. We believe that there is always a reason to hope. Right now, one of the things that is making me hopeful is the fact that so many people have shown a willingness to engage in this difficult conversation and to do the work of resisting racism within our souls and in the world around us. And of course, we have an even deeper reason for hope than that. The greatest reason we have to be hopeful is the fact that we believe that God has got the power to transform not just individual hearts, but entire societies. God has used the church to heal the world before, and we believe that God can use the church to heal the world again. We are living in a Lenten world, but we have got an Easter hope, and that gives us the courage to do the hard work, the hard work of learning, the hard work of being honest with each other, the hard work of healing our own souls in this racism, white supremacy, scarred world. Now this morning, I encourage you to take a moment to have whatever conversation you need to have with God this morning. 
as Ryan Pratt leads us in a time of prayer. Good morning, Court Street family, and bow your heads with me as we pray together. Dear God, we come before you today as your beloved children. God, we pray that you would help our society come together. We notice in our country, state, community, and family that there are disagreements and divisions sometimes. But we pray that you would bless these social systems with peace, blessings, and love. Allow our society to find reasons to stick together and work together for an even stronger future, Lord. God, we pray for continued protection and support for frontline workers and those exposed to the pandemic each and every day. We thank you for their sacrifice and their risk in order to help those in need. God, we pray for advancement in slowing and stopping this pandemic, allowing life to look a little more normal. God, we thank you for the work you do in our lives, and we pray that you would continue to support us and allow us to find ways to be joyful. Help us continue on and give us strength when we need it the most. We pray for these positive things in our lives in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we believe that God has called us to create a world with more peace and more hope by loving one another as Jesus loves us. One of the ways Jesus revealed God's love during his ministry was by feeding the hungry and teaching his disciples to do the same. Jesus said on the day of judgment, all of us will stand before God. And in that moment, we will discover that whenever we shared bread with our hungry neighbors, we were really showing hospitality to the Son of God walking among us. Now this week, we have an opportunity to reveal God's love by sharing some food with our neighbors. And we invite you on Monday and Wednesday of this week to swing through the parking lot at Court Street United Methodist Church. And there will be people waiting to meet you and to receive your donations for the Crossover Downtown Outreach Ministry Food Pantry. Now, right now, Crossover has let us know that they are particularly in need of protein for the shelves at their food pantry. And so we are specifically asking this week for you to bring through donations of peanut butter and cans of tuna. And you can bring those through the church parking lot on Monday from 3 to 5 in the afternoon and on Wednesday from 10 in the morning until noon. That's Monday from 3 to 5 and Wednesday from 10 until noon. And we also want you to remember that Crossover Downtown Outreach Ministry is putting together some Easter baskets and some Easter meals for our neighbors this year. And they've invited us to be part of bringing joy to children in our neighborhood this year by dropping off individually wrapped candies, and also small toys and anything we think might bring a child joy when they find it in an Easter basket on Easter Sunday morning. And you can bring those gifts through the parking lot with you on Monday and Wednesday. And if those days and times don't work, you can also drop off your peanut butter, your tuna, and your Easter gifts at, directly at Crossover Downtown Outreach Ministry anytime, anytime before March 12th. Thank you, Court Street United Methodist Church, for all of the ways in which you reveal and share God's love in downtown Flint and in the places where you live. Well, now I want to share with you a special musical offering for this morning. Today, I want to share with you a recording that was made in this place during worship two years ago this week. Now, you might remember that two years ago, the United Methodist Church experienced a moment of trauma and pain when a general conference, a global gathering of leaders from all around the United Methodist Church, narrowly decided to uphold and maintain and even increase restrictions that keep LGBTQ United Methodists from fully participating in the life of the church, either through being married in the church or through answering God's call to ordain ministry within the church. And that decision was disappointing and painful for many members of our Court Street United Methodist Church family. But then in the days following that decision, God did what God does. God took that pain and that trauma and God transformed it into a wave of love that swept through the church. 
And here in worship on a Sunday morning, two years ago, the chancel choir and some of their friends took a moment to share a song of encouragement and affirmation with those people who felt most hurt by the church's decision. And we are so glad that someone made a recording of that moment. And today felt like a good day to once again share that, that song with you as a reminder that no matter what the world says, no matter what the church says, you are a child of God. Here, once again, we invite you to take a deep breath and enjoy the chancel choir and friends as they offer us this musical number, Mark Miller's song, Child of God. Now I'd like to introduce this morning's guest preacher. All throughout the season of Lent, Court Street Church is participating in a sermon series with other United Methodist congregations all around the city of Flint. And we've invited pastors from many United Methodist congregations to tell a little bit of their stories, to share how God called them into ministry and how God has brought them to the place where they now find themselves. Our hope is that as you hear these stories from many United Methodist pastors, you might begin to learn how to listen for God's call in your own life and how to follow God in the path that God has laid out for you. And this morning's guest preacher is Pastor J.J. Manshrek of the Flushing United Methodist Church. And Pastor J.J. grew up in the Detroit area. And you might wonder, well, can you be any more specific than that? And the answer is, no, I really can't. Pastor J.J.'s dad is also a United Methodist pastor which means they moved around a lot when he was growing up and so grew up in the Detroit area is as specific as I can get. 
Pastor JJ went to college in Grand Rapids. He went to seminary in Chicago. He and his wife Sarah have three very young boys in the house right now. And I've had a really good time getting to know Pastor JJ in the couple years that he's been at the Flushing United Methodist Church. His enthusiasm and his love for Jesus are contagious. And it is a treat for me to be able to welcome him as he shares a sermon with the people today of the Court Street United Methodist Church. Yeah. Today's scripture comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. And it goes like this. And I'm using the New Living Translation. And it says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Elah. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed, and the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. And suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? And he got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. And then the Lord called out again, Samuel. And again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not know, did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time. And once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? And Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if somebody calls again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and as the Lord called, er, came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. And then the Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do a shocking thing in Israel. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Please pray with me. Dear God, I just ask that you come into this place and you help me to preach. If I've written down anything that's worth listening to, God, I ask that you open their hearts, open their ears to hear your word this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart, may that be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today, as you probably know by now, is week three of our collaborative Flint Mission Zone sermon series called Anointed, Hearing God's Voice, Answering God's Call. Now, if you're just joining us today for the very first time, welcome. In this Lenten season, you're experiencing the call stories of United Methodist pastors from all over the Flint Mission Zone. Now, for those who don't know, my name is Pastor J.J. Manshrek, and I am the lead pastor over at Flushing United Methodist Church. It's very nice to see you this morning. Our scripture for today can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 3, and it reads, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of the Lord. And suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? And he got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you. Eli replied, go back to bed. So he did. I love this call story because from God, is what, what we find is that... Um, I love this call story from God that we find in the book of Samuel because it feels a little bit like we're doing a prank call on Eli. I mean, this is the omnipotent God of all creation trying to get somebody's attention and he doesn't bother to make himself known. You ever do that thing where you walk up to someone and you tap them on the other side of the shoulder so they'll look that way and not see you, right? That's what this feels like to me. And he does it again in verse 6. It says, then the Lord called out again, Samuel. And again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Three times God is messing with Samuel, but then Eli figures it out in verse 9. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if somebody calls again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. 
And so Samuel went back to bed. See, what we see here is that the proper response to the whispers of God in our lives is simply to listen. There is no secret code. There's no special formula to get God to speak into our lives. You don't even have to say, here I am. You can just listen. It keeps going in verse 10 and it says, And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. And then the Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do a shocking thing in Israel. Now I'm going to leave that with a little bit of a cliffhanger because the focus this morning is not what God said to Samuel. What I want you to notice is the persistence and the patience of God reaching out and calling Samuel four times. This is very good news for us. I mean, if you've ever worried that you missed your chance to listen to the voice of God, rest assured, God will not, uh, God will make himself heard in your life. He will not abandon you. This comes not just as an observation from the scriptures, but also as an experience in my life. I have spent most of my life trying to tell God no. You see, I'm a fourth generation pastor. My father is a pastor. My grandfather is a pastor. And my great grandfather was a missionary pastor. And so becoming a pastor was possibly the single most uncreative thing that I could possibly come up with. And so I said, absolutely not. I will not be a pastor, God. Believe it or not, I was actually a a pretty dorky kid in high school, and so I did really well in the areas of math and science, and so I was kind of drawn towards mission work. And so I thought, I'll be a doctor. I'll be a great missionary doctor. That's what I will be. And so I searched for colleges with the intent of going to med school. I chose the college I went to, Calvin College in Grand Rapids, Michigan, because of their pre-med program, which is amazing. And I went to the medical field and I said, Eli, did you call me? And the medical field said, no, we did not call you. Go back to sleep. Well, actually, the real story involves me sitting in a guidance counselor's office talking about the med school requirements. And I was was at a college I wasn't even going to. I was just visiting to experience their program. And this guy, this counselor, I don't even remember his name. He leans across the desk and he said, you don't seem very excited about med school. And I was honest with him. I told him, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm not, but it's what I'm good at, so I have to do that. And I'll never forget what he said to me. He looked at me and he said, you will never make it through med school if you do not have a passion for the field. I had good grades, but I didn't have a passion for the field. And so two months before I entered college, I actually switched my major to religion and music. I thought to myself, what do I have a passion for doing? And I've always loved worship music. And so I said, all right, I'm going to be a professional worship leader, right? I knew God was calling me to work in the religious world, and I didn't want to be a pastor. And if I wasn't going to be a medical missionary, all right, I could be a professional worship leader. (laughs) I went to the music ministry field saying, Eli, did you call me? But music ministry said, no, we did not call you. Go back to sleep. I love music. I play in our church, uh, our praise band at church every chance I get. But I didn't have the skill set to make it a career. And as all church uh, musicians know, it is not a gig that pays very well unless you're in one of those giant churches. And all the organists said, amen. (laughs) Fast forward a few more years and I was getting to the end of college. And that's just about the time when people start expecting a real answer when they asked the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I knew God was calling me to be something in the church and I would not be a pastor. And if I couldn't be a medical missionary and I couldn't be a professional worship leader, then I I had this class. I had a philosophy professor and I gave a presentation in class in my senior year and she called me aside after class and she said, I think you could teach. There it was. I will teach religion, right? I could be a professor, right? I mean, let's be honest. Professor JJ is way cooler than Pastor JJ, right? So I headed off to seminary to be a professor. I went to the ivory tower of education saying, Eli, did you call me? And academia said, no, we did not call you. Go back to sleep. 
I still think that it would be amazing to someday become a professor, perhaps at a Bible college or a seminary. I studied Greek and Hebrew. I soaked up every bit of information that I could grab while speculating as to what my PhD thesis might be. And then I started field education. At the seminary where I went, all the students were required to do field education, just like a student teaching for those who are in education or hospital internships for those who are going into the medical field. My seminary wanted everyone to get hands-on experience working in the religious world. And so some of us become chaplains and some of us become counselors. But for most of us, we became interns at nearby churches. And what does the 23-year-old young man do in a church? Youth ministry, of course. Now, I love youth ministry, so that was no big deal. I really enjoyed that. But then one day I got a call from a mom of one of my students. And, and a, my, she said, my middle school son just got in a fight with another one of the boys. And he also goes to the church. They're both in the basketball team, and, and they got in a fight in the locker room. And I was hoping that you could go and talk to them because they're both in your youth program. Now, again, I'm this nerdy academic kid, right? Like all my knowledge is up in my head. I don't know what to say to these boys. I'm just, I just like the Bible a lot. I had no idea what to say to these kids, but I agreed to help. And so I put some Bibles out in my office. I prepped a couple of discussion questions and I spent a lot of time asking God for some help. Please help me think of something smart to say, God. Please, please help me, help me, help me. I don't know what I'm doing, help me. And the boys came, they sat in my office. I don't remember what we said I, at all. I remember almost nothing. I know we talked, I know we prayed, I took them to Steak and Shake for dinner, and then I took them home. And that was it. And then the next week, I got a phone call from that same mom. She was in tears. And she said, I don't, I don't know what you said to those boys, but they are playing basketball right now in my driveway. And I just cannot thank you enough. And I had this moment where I was kind of like, whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this pastoral ministry? Like, is that what pastors get to do? They get to change lives? They get to help people in the real world? And I was hooked. Long story short, ever since then, I have had a front row seat watching God transform people's lives ever since. After hearing, no, I did not call you from the medical field, from the music world, from academia, finally I turned to God and I said, okay, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The good news this morning that I hope you hear in my personal call story, but also in the story of God is calling you. Persistently, patiently, God is calling you. No matter who you are or where you are in your faith journey, there is something in this life that God is calling you to do. Sometimes we ignore God. Sometimes we pretend it is someone else who is calling us, but God is calling you. And the response from each and every one of us to that fact is to identify where the call is coming from and then say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Now, there's two quick applications and then we're done. First, I want to encourage you to listen for God's call. Maybe you think that the call is only something that pastors get, but that's not true. God is calling you for a specific ministry in your life. God wants to use you in some special, unique way to reach someone that only you can reach with the love of Jesus. Pastors are really good at reaching people in the pews, but only you have access to the people in your life that God could reach through you. So listen for God's call. No matter what stage you are in, no matter how many times you have run the other way, no matter what you have said to God in the past, listen for the call. Some of you might be thinking, well, I'm, I'm too old for God to call me to do anything significant. But let's not forget Eli's role in the story of Samuel. Eli was super old and com almost completely blind, but he was absolutely vital 
to Samuel's call story. You are never too old or too young or too blind or too anything to use the skills that you have to point people to Jesus. So listen for God's call on your life. That's the first challenge for today. Number two, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, prepare your life for that call. Yes, listen for God's call, but then prepare yourself for what God might say. Be ready with the answer, which might mean you have to be ready to throw away the picture you had in your mind. Personally, I had to throw away a lot of pictures that I had of what I thought God was leading me to do in my life. The picture in your head might not match the picture that God is drawing in your real life. But then I hope you realize the picture that I had in my head, it was created using an outdated set of blueprints for the future, which are a fool's errand. Whereas the picture that God was drawing in my life was a masterpiece. Listen for God's call in your life and then prepare yourself to answer that call. Get ready to say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. God is calling you persistently, patiently, like he called Samuel, like he called me. God has a good work for each and every member of his kingdom. And so I'll leave you with this. May you listen for God's call in your life. May you get ready to answer that call, no matter what that might lead you. And then finally, may you turn to God and say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Amen. In just a moment, I'm going to offer a word of blessing. Before the benediction, I want to remind you that this is the first Sunday of the month, which means after worship, we're going to invite you to gather in on a time of congregational Zooming. 
This is a time for us to see faces and hear voices and connect with one another in the way that we used to do in the church parlors over donuts and coffee after worship. Now, the details of how to log into that Zoom were in the church newsletter and also in an email that got sent out to the congregation this week. If you're joining us in worship through Zoom this morning, all you have to do is stay on the line and wait a few minutes and your church family will join you momentarily. We would love this morning, we would love to see your face and hear your voice during a time of, of fellowship and conversation following worship. All right, I invite you now to receive this word of blessing. When God calls, may you have the courage to say, here I am. And may the blessing of God the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us always. Go in peace. You are deeply loved.